This is the story of a DPF that managed to have a long happy life next to an engine that it served for many thousands of miles. In this video we are discussing the strategies and behaviors that you can use to ensure that your DPF doesn't have problems for many many thousands of miles. We set the context to our story and we define the DPF as a magical filtering device that requires gases to pass through the porous walls of a filtering element, a filtering element that catches, stores, and later with the help of the ECU will burn off those particulates, ensuring that the engine is able to achieve very strict emission regulations, and in other words, making sure that all of us don't get cancer. As time passed, we humans have got very good at burning stuff. Besides the useful bits, which are heat and not so useful bit smoke, one of the byproducts of us burning anything will be a small little thing called ash. Ash buildup as a byproduct of us burning the content of the DPF, of burning the content of soot in the DPF is considered the natural cause of death for our DPF. It reduces its efficiency, it reduces its storing capacity and is the thing that we would want to avoid if we want to use that DPF for a long period of time. We are able to do that by burning the fuel as efficient as possible, generating less soot and also when that soot buildup is unavoidable we make sure that the chemicals, the lubricants, the fuel that we are using are designed in such a way that the quantity, the amount of ash that they will be outputting is limited. What do we know so far? We know that we want our DPF to last forever. We know that soot buildup is something that we want to avoid. We know that ash accumulation is something that we really want to avoid. And taking these things in account, now we are able to discuss the strategies and behaviors that we want to implement to ensure that this DPF is going to last forever. Making your DPF last forever, rule number one. The first thing that we can impact, the first thing that we should be looking at is the type of driving that we are doing. If we are doing mostly short, short drives, start and stop traffic, with the engine not being able to get up to optimum running temperature, we need to consider once a week taking the car on a longer journey, a journey that will ensure the conditions necessary for the DPF to regen. The common assumption or a common scenario for the majority of cars is that if you want your DPF to regen, driving at constant speed over that 40 miles per hour with the engine up to temperature, for a period of 20 to 30 minutes should be enough for the DPF to regen. I would say do the same type of driving for at least one hour and by doing that or by scheduling that in your driving scenarios you are giving your car the chance to do a natural regen of the DPF. The next thing to consider after the type of driving is getting to know our cars and understanding a little bit of what the manufacturer recommends in the use of the DPF. So whenever you have the opportunity, I have it somewhere over here, get the owner's manual, read it, as you might be able to find some interesting information in that area. Servicing. Newer cars come with longer periods of servicing. However, those longer periods of servicing can affect reliability. All is good and nice when the vehicle is under warranty. After the warranty finishes, that is usually when we see big problems with the DPFs. So servicing your vehicle using the correct type of oil, the correct spec of oil, mainly because we want a low ash content for, for the oil and for the fuels. So having the correct spec of oil, changing the oil more frequently to avoid other 
issues with reliability, with efficiency of the engine. We need to consider oil dilution, another factor that appears when, when we're discussing DPF regions and vehicles with DPFs. There are multiple reasons for which servicing should be done at shorter intervals. Take my word for it, do the servicing at six to 10,000 miles and your DPF will be much, much more happy. We discussed behavior, driving scenarios, getting to know your car, servicing. Now we address the thing that sometimes puts a smile on my face and that is ECU remapping, engine remapping and the not so healthy types of engine remapping. Also we need to consider in this discussion those tuning boxes. Those were or, or those are some of the things that have quite a bad impact on DPF life mainly because to get more power you need to inject more fuel and some of the less expensive tuning boxes and some of the less expensive remaps are dumping too much fuel in the combustion chamber too much too much fuel that generates more soot more soot generates more ash and you can see the connection to the reason why your DPF might fail the last thing that I would want to discuss are technical issues and here the list is quite quite big. The rough idea or the overall idea is should you have any technical issues that influence the way that your fuel is being burned, the efficiency of burning, inhibit DPF regeneration and influence the way that the DPF is able to work all of those issues need to be sorted out as the DPF will fail due to that. The list is quite extensive. My approach to this is as soon as you're noticing something not okay with your car, address it. Don't leave it for, for, um, for it to get out of hand. I will try to do a longer video describing that, but the subject is quite extensive anything uh, on the intake side so if you're losing air on the intake is a cause for the DPF to get clogged if you're losing pressure on the exhaust your DPF differential sensors will trigger or inhibit your DPF region if your fuel injectors aren't working properly you're injecting more fuel your DPF has more soot it affects the life of uh, your DPF like that multiple sensors not working, it might inhibit DPF regeneration. EGR systems are clogged. Again, the DPF is not able to regen as the EGR is part of the regen process. What else? Um, another interesting bit are additives. So all sorts of additives go on the route of uh, generating more ash or different types of contaminants for your DPF. Other things to consider and main things to consider will be oil consumption. So if your oil level is going all over the place, fix it because that oil ends up in the DPF. Sooner or later you are going to see it. Overall, the main concept or the main idea regarding the DPF is that it doesn't fail due to the part failing. It is a symptom of something else that is happening in your engine and the cause needs to be found so that uh, the DPF doesn't fail or if you are replacing it, the replacement part will be able to work properly. This being said, you have the main things that you can influence Take them into account and hopefully you will have a DPF that lasts for a very, very long time. I hope that this video helped. If I forgot something or if you have ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments below. If you want to work with me on different projects, get in touch, get in touch using the links below. And that being said, I'm going to see you in the next video.